morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. Lots of interesting stories that are breaking this morning. So Mitch McConnell freezing again. What the hell is going on here? We will show you the video and we will discuss. We've also got a little bit of a pod save bro freak out <laughs> over uh, Biden's polling numbers and how the hell he is tied with the man who has been indicted <laughs> 91 different charges. We'll give you their analysis. We'll give you our analysis and all of that. Also some new data uh, from reporter Ken Klippenstein about how the FBI is hoovering up DNA information, what that could mean for you. We've got some new economic numbers that are looking pretty dire, especially for uh, working class Americans, racking up tons of credit card debt in a very difficult position right now. So I'll break those numbers down for you. We've also got CNN going back to the big streaming yes. place, Hager. Right. They're giving it another whirl. Um, and they also have a new president of the network that they are bringing in from uh, previously from the New York Times. So that is an interesting development as well. And we're excited to have on the show today a big Zoomer debate. <laughs> Two young TikTokers, one on the right, one on the left, um, uh, debating, you know, who young people should and yes. could support in 2024. So that should be a fun one yeah, as well. Yeah, I think it's, it'll be enjoyable. Just want to say thanks to everybody who's been signing up and been helping support us. We've got in the latter stages of getting that focus group all together. Uh, so it's going to be a big deal for us to be able to have our own polling, our own focus group, and in a partnership with a big firm um, here uh, that we is trying to make some headways into the United States. So anyway, the point is, is that you guys are the ones who enable all of this work. Uh, it is very, very expensive. So we appreciate everybody who's been signing up, breakingpoints.com, if you are able. And just one programming note, uh, everybody have a good Labor Day weekend. We will have a show on Tuesday. Uh, we will not be here on Monday for us and for all of our crew. So we just wanted to flag that for you. Before we get to right now, what is the biggest news? Senator Mitch McConnell, the leader of the GOP in the United States Senate, freezing on camera once again in the middle of a press conference while giving one in Kentucky. Here's what happened. Senator, you're up for election in three short years. What are your thoughts on this point? I'm sorry, I had a hard time hearing you. That's okay. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's a, <clears throat> Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Penny. Okay. Okay. Somebody else have a question? Please speak up. Um, what efforts is Daniel Cameron going to have to make on the campaign trail to win Kentuckians over in November? Senator Daniel Cameron, do uh, you have a comment on Daniel Cameron? Well, I think the government race is going to be very close. Uh, <clears throat> far and away the best candidate we could have nominated. And... Uh, a state has become increasingly Republican. In fact, the governor is the only Democrat left in Concord. So I'm optimistic that Daniel will be our next governor of Kentucky. Okay, I think we can do one more. Senator, what is your reaction on Trump's latest indictment? Would you support him as a nominee? It's a question about Trump. Yeah, I'm not going to comment about the, the presidential race, either, either on the Republican side or the Democrat side. Okay, thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. That was the full exchange there that we decided to show everybody, Crystal, because it's very important. I mean, look, it's difficult to watch. There's no question about it. But, and if he was a private citizen, we would have nothing to say. But he's the leader of the GOP in the entire Senate. Yeah. He's 81 years old. This is the second time in the last 40 days that this has happened. It wasn't that long ago. And I mean... I, I, I posted this, and one of the comments that really stuck with me was very simple. Would you trust this person behind the uh, wheel of a car? No, absolutely not. And if that's the case, how can you trust that person with a senior leadership role in passing laws for 340 million citizens? It really is that basic. It's this, it's Dianne Feinstein. You also see something pretty disgraceful there with that aide, you know, 
trying to pretend everything is fine and yeah. just shouting the questions back into his ear. Just obviously she's like, I need to minimize the damage and all this. You also had uh, one of the people who came over, that was his Capitol Police Protection Officer, who, I mean, for some reason didn't lead him away. It's one of those where I, I just don't know the level of deference that we're supposed to have at, the, at this point. I mean, it's, it seems to me like elder abuse, specifically with a Capitol Police Officer you're charged with his welfare and his well-being. You need to get this man to a doctor immediately. I mean, I, I, I just don't know how at a certain point we were supposed to sit here and stomach these incidents again and again and again. And then the level of like hand-holding that these people are getting. And also many of the reporters in the room, how is the very first, Manu Raju to his credit at the time that the first thing happened, the very first question is like, are you okay? He's like, yeah. what the hell just happened to you? Right. Why are they all sitting there and pretending everything is fine? Yeah. Immediately they're like, what is going on? Are you having health problems? Mm -hmm. Like, are, are you fit to serve? The thing that really struck me with the AIDS is number one, what you're saying, Sagar, yeah. of like, you know, the total lack of transparency, their attempt to cover up for the American people, the fact that like in Dianne Feinstein's office, like that lady there, whoever she is, who yeah. no one voted for or elected right. is probably really running the show, her and whoever, whatever other aides surround him and try to handle him. Um, but number two, they're not panicked about this at all, mm -hmm. which tells you that either they're like the most callous, unfeeling people on the planet, or this happens all the time. All the time. And they know exactly what it is. And they're not concerned because they know this is routine. They know this is just the state of life that he's in right now. Because, my God, if this was someone you cared about even a little, even if you didn't care about them, mm -hmm. you'd be like, we're getting you to a doctor. We're getting you to a hospital. You could be having a stroke right now. But both with the previous incident and now with this one, which is coming, what, a month later? on camera, how often is this happening? How often is this just the reality and state of affairs? Um, in terms of conjecture of like, what the hell is going on here? We learned last time that he suffered a number of falls. Mm -hmm. He suffered a concussion. We know that as well. Could be lingering after effects. I did see uh, Sanjay Gupta on CNN was floating, could be later stages of Parkinson's disease can cause these kind of freezes as well. If you're like medication is wearing off, you could end up in this sort of incident. But the fact that there isn't an immediate freak out about it to me is a real tell that this is going on all the time. People can't freak out. It's a bipartisan problem. You got the freaking leader. He's the most powerful Republican, elected Republican in the entire country right now. It's absent, what, uh, Kevin McCarthy. So I guess number two. Yeah. Um, in some ways, number one, because everything does move through the Senate. Yep. And the Democrats can't say anything because the president of the United States is just as old and has just as frequent, like, crazy events happen to him. You referenced uh, just earlier the, so the first event, as we said, this was less than 40 days ago. This was on July 26. Let's all go and relive that incident because it is so stark exactly how similar this entire thing was. Let's take a listen. And a string of uh, uh, exact same situation. Let's put this up there. Uh, explanation by, from the senator's office. Here's what they had to say. Quote, just in, uh, Senator McConnell's aide says that the majority, minority leader felt, quote, momentarily lightheaded and paused during a press conference. While he feels fine, he will be consulting a physician prior to his next event. I mean, what level of gaslighting is this? It's outrageous to just say, but listen, we've all experienced momentarily, momentary lightheadedness. Okay, I think most normal people can relate. Even on one, I mean, personally, I'm not gonna give him a pass on the first one, but the second one in the span of just a couple of, like in less than a month, ludicrous. And also what you said, the fa the routine nature through which that the guard was handling it yeah. and also the aide, you're like, how much is this happening? Mm -hmm. yeah, how many times absolutely. in the middle of a conversation is a guy freezing? That is the type of tactics that, that you see in which they handle folks in a nursing home. And, <laughs> and in many ways, like that is what the Senate is becoming with Dianne Feinstein and with him. He is almost worse than Feinstein because Feinstein is just your normal senator. This is a person in the position of immense leadership yeah, right. and say over the country. And the even worse part, as you said, is that his aides are very clearly running this show. How much is even going on? And then, you know, bears a very personal question of like, where are this man's kids? And his wife, if you care about this man, if you, his wife, Elaine Chow, is an elected official, she, she's got to know more, or was an appointed official, I'm sorry, uh, was somebody who should know more than anyone on the public eye of like how this is undermining not only democracy, but also just a terrible legacy look. I mean, at a certain point, like where do these people 
get like where where are they? How do they not step in and immediately try to put an end to this? I I just don't. I'm so flabbergasted by it. As yeah. I said, I would never put this person behind a vehicle. If this person was driving around, I'd be like, you got to pull this man's license Im immediately. And you know, I, just the other day, I think I told you this. I'm not sure if I talked about it on the show. I saw a very elderly person almost hit somebody in the middle of a crosswalk, and then started crying afterwards because they had clearly they didn't know what was going on. And I feel really bad for that person. But she almost hit another lady, you know, who was walking with her kid. And it's one of those where it's like this is a public safety concern at a certain point. And now we're that's like that situation times 300 million yeah. whenever it comes to the adults that he's in Yeah, charge I mean, of. I wouldn't trust him with right. any basic intellectual no. task, yeah. let alone, right. you know, being one of the most powerful men in the entire country, yeah. if not planet. You know, there's a backstory here that's worth uh, remembering as well, because it raised a lot of questions about his health at the time, which is previously in the state of Kentucky, the governor gets to appoint if for whatever reason, a senator has to step down and retire early before an election. The governor, who right now in Kentucky is a Democrat, gets to appoint their successor. Um, they ushered through new legislation recently through the Kentucky legislature, which would change it so that it's the Republican-held legislature which picks the successor. And there was a lot that was read into that at the time about, oh, this is the Mitch McConnell succession plan. They don't want governor, Democratic Governor Andy Bashir to be able to appoint his successor if he is unable to fulfill his whole term. I think it's worth remembering that. The other thing I'd say, Sagar, is, you know, it would be one thing if this was like a beloved person with the freaking 80% approval rating in his state mm -hmm. that people really want to be there as long as he possibly can be here. That is not the reality. Mitch McConnell, even though Kentucky is, you know, a pretty Republican state at this point, Mitch McConnell has one of the lowest approval ratings of any senator with their own constituents in the entire country. He is not beloved by his constituents. They would love to have a different Republican in that seat. And it's not like there's much risk that you're going to end up, you know, electing a Democrat at the federal level in the state of Kentucky at this point. Um, yes, at the state level, they'll still vote for a Democratic governor. But the days of them voting for a Democratic senator for now are pretty seems pretty far fetched. So you don't even have to worry about the partisan control situation. So you're just holding on for the sake of holding on. You're holding on for the sake of power when you are in no condition to wield that power effectively. I mean, I lived in Kentucky. I saw Mitch McConnell up close operating there not very long ago when he still seemed really in command, really at the height of his power. The decline seems to have come pretty quickly and pretty steeply, but it's impossible for them to hide at this point. And I do actually think that there's a possibility, just given the frequency now with which these events are occurring and given you know all of the, the media interest in this, given the fact that there are a lot of people who would like him to move aside, I do think it's possible that he steps down in the not too right. distant future. Listen, I would hope so, but the Feinstein situation was a break the glass moment. It's like when you can be genuinely senile and still be told on camera how to vote and get away with it, what are we gonna do? And like I said, I mean, it's a bipartisan, people are too afraid of McConnell, not even of McConnell, They're afraid of his staff now at this point. They can, yeah. they can screw you. If you're a junior senator, I mean, on all kinds of little things, like they can schedule things so that it makes your life inconvenient. They can make sure they don't accommodate you. They can give you a basement office. There's all kinds of little things they can do to make your life absolutely well, with, hell. With Feinstein, like, they've basically, you know, she's become a pawn for Nancy Pelosi to try to get her chosen Democratic yes. successor, Adam Schiff, in there. Right. I mean, that's what's going on there at this point. And previously, Pelosi and Obama propped her up when she faced a primary challenge because they didn't want someone who was progressive and maybe wasn't going to just, you know, fall in line on literally everything, single thing that they want her to fall in line on. So that's why they've propped her up. With McConnell, I don't know what the political backstory is, who is enabling this, or if it's just all on him that he just wants to hold, cling to power for the sake of clinging to power. Or, I, I mean, the other thing with Feinstein at this point, like, I don't even think she's self-aware mm -hmm. of how far gone she mm -hmm. is because the brain is just like, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's obvious for everyone to see. With McConnell, I've got to think there's still a, quite a bit of awareness of how bad this has gotten and how different he is now from even just a few years ago. Yeah, these people are just complete egomaniacs. It's completely insane. Let's go and put this chart up there just to remind everybody we're currently living in one of the oldest Congresses ever, the 118th Congress, only slightly uh, uh, less old than the 117th Congress, just so everybody is wondering, only because of a few Gen Z entrants which dropped the overall average. I mean, listen, McConnell is the second oldest Republican in the entire chamber behind Chuck Grassley. Senator Feinstein 
Feinstein and Grassley are both flirting there around the 90 years old. We have multiple members of the House of Representatives who are pushing 85, multiple over the age of 80. It's a bipartisan issue, as I said. And uh, one of the, I did a monologue about this previously, uh, which showed a chart which said that uh, it was actually fascinating. I really do think about it. We've talked about it uh, since, about how after Jim Crow ended, you had a new generation of blood all come in to the Senate and yeah. into the House because a lot of different people could vote. And it's one of those where I'm just trying to think of, and, or imagine a situation where if more young people voted, if more people actually got engaged in the political system, we could end this. Like this is both an irresponsibility on their part, but some of it is on us too because McConnell just got reelected. He's not uphill 2026. 20, it's up to him to basically ride it out until his brain goes to complete mush. And then as we found out, we find Sonny, even then, as long as you get reelected yeah. and the machine bosses push you through, they'll still push your ass around in a wheelchair let me, and subject you onto everybody. Let me draw yeah. that out a little bit because you did that monologue yeah. on this and I thought it was so good because <laughs> you got to the point of this is not just like about these individual egomaniacs clinging to power long past the time when they should have, you know, retired with a lot more grace. It's really a failure of democracy. Mm -hmm. And so it's not an accident that when you have the end of Jim Crow and you have an actual like rebirth and flourishing of democracy that you get a new a lot of new lifeblood in there. It's also not an accident that now when we have so many of our democratic institutions completely corroded and completely rigged too that you end up with this state of affairs where, you know, not just with McConnell, but we're about to have this election between Trump and Biden, two old men that most of the country don't want to have either one of them in office. How does that happen? And what you bring up with the McConnell election is actually a really good point. How did it end up that Mitch McConnell gets reelected again and again, even though his approval rating is one of the lowest in the entire country? And it's a number of things. I mean, one thing that is really clear, Kentucky's a Republican state. They want to have a Republican in charge. And so they're more inclined to vote in a Republican partisan direction. That's their choice. That's fine. That makes some sense. But the other piece is, OK, well, then why doesn't he face a primary challenge? Well, anyone would be terrified to primary him because of you know the way money in politics works, the way that the you know heavy hand of the party would come down, the way that they would quash any potential political future for you. So that's an impossibility. And then even on the Democratic side, why wasn't there you know a better challenger in place to even have a shot against him? And it was the same thing on the Democratic side. You know they put their their thumb on the scale for Amy McGrath, who was a you know very poor candidate and didn't have a shot whatsoever. And so. That's how you, you, the fact that these two parties, you know, prop up these candidates that no one likes or wants is part of how you end up with this situation as well. So when you think about money in politics, when you think about the, the party system and the way that works, when you think of, you know, the, the partisan tribal divide that also leads to people just voting for whoever has their partisan affiliation alongside them. That's kind of how you end up with this uh, very yeah. regretful situation. That's right. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.